Visit Elmhurst.org to explore the new City of Elmhurst website. Find out the latest Elmhurst news, pay utility bills and parking tickets, report concerns, and much more. Elmhurst.org is an ideal way to discover what Elmhurst offers your business, your family, your life.
national anthem. Please be seated. Good afternoon. And on behalf of the entire York faculty and staff, I want to extend a warm welcome to the families and friends of our graduates, to the Board of Education, to our superintendent, Dr. Krizik and most of all, to the York High School class of 2010. Give yourselves a hand. We are honored today to be joined by members of the Board of Education. Please help me welcome President Peggy Ostajek, Vice President Deb O'Keefe Conroy, Secretary David Carlquist, Jim Collins, Marta Davey, and Maria Hirsch. Welcome. Thank you. Today, we are honored to hear the voices of students in speech and song. And we will also hear from a member of the Board of Education, a special day for him as his oldest child will graduate today. I hope that you enjoy our ceremony. I want to take a moment to recognize five members of our faculty who are celebrating their own commencement into retirement. Mrs. Virginia Highstone, Mr. Jeff Kolar, Ms. Deneen Larson, Mr. Tom Linger, and Mr. Kurt Merrill. Will you all please stand so that we can recognize you for your contributions. This is York. Four years ago, on your first day here, I welcomed you in the auditorium as incoming freshmen. And I hoped, and may have been deluded into thinking that you were paying attention that day, when I told you that the words, this is York, describes the history of this great school not the brick and mortar, but the culture of the students and staff, and that you, as a class, would shape the culture in your own unique way. It was from this class several years ago that we heard loud and clear that when we define ourselves, we want to be a school that welcomes each student with open arms one that is kind and never bullying or intolerant. But you took it a step further. You said tolerance wasn't enough, that it was the acceptance and celebration of differences that should be the hallmark of this class and would indeed define us as a school. And so we embarked on that endeavor together through Challenge Day and Pride and J. Kyle Braid amnesty and relay for life. You showed your school spirit, wearing green on Fridays, cheering at pep rallies and football games and track meets. 
But you are a school whose spirit is defined not just in wins and losses, but in the ability for a group of students to earn a seat on an old sofa at a football game with the title of King of the Couch. You have seen great success. Some of the most talented scholars, athletes, musicians, actors, and artists are sitting here. The single best gymnast in the state. The, the fastest swimmers and runners, the top chef, and a young man who pitched a perfect baseball game. And you are a modest class, too. It is a class that has also seen great loss, especially this year, when we lost a member of your senior class, Cody Bush, and our dear friend and teacher, Ms. Dee McKenzie. Cody's mother, Tammy, is here today, and we extend our wishes to her. You have looked out for each other. You have come together in success and in loss, and you are quite simply the kindest group of students I have ever worked with, and I will miss you. I hope, I hope that you will continue to wear that green that's in your closet. I hope that your lives are filled with purpose and integrity. I hope that you continue to laugh and sing and dance, and I hope that if you dance, that you please, please find some new dance moves. <laughs> when we did our sound checks this morning, I asked the students how their parents were doing today on the day of their graduation, and one of the girls said, Ms. Smith, my mom seems to be crying on and off at odd times. What's up with that? I get it. For while you may have mixed feelings about your own graduation, I can speak for your parents and the faculty when I say you are not alone. So students, allow me to give my annual graduation advice. Your families could not be prouder of you than they are today. So whatever it is that you've been wishing or asking for, money or the car, let me suggest that this is the day to ask for it. And finally, I hope that you look back on your time here with pride, that you're, you are a York graduate and a Duke. And yes, we are excited about where you're headed from here, where you will go and what you will be. But more than that, we are immensely proud of who you are today. This is York. I wish you the very best. Class of 2010, it seemed that today would never come. After all the countdowns and attempts to make time go faster, we have finally made it. And now that we are here, about to leave this place that we have known for four years, I believe that I can say with great certainty that the lessons, experiences, and friendships we have seen here are as invaluable as they are unique. They have helped us make decisions concerning our lives and the world in which we live, and will remain with us for years to come. Today is not only a ceremony of endings, but one of new beginnings as well. When we first started at York, we were anything but unified. Each of us was defined by the middle school we attended, the classes we took in eighth grade, or the sports that we played. But over the past four years, we have come together a considerable amount. We have stood side by side on cold, rainy bleachers, screaming and cheering on our team. We have painted the gym purple, broken attendance records at dances, and even started new clubs. We have become more than just hundreds of students. We have become a class. And now, just as we are a united front, comfortable with who we are and our places in this school, we must leave. However, 
as we continue on to a new chapter in our lives, we will never forget the lessons that we have learned here, in and outside the classrooms. Our supportive teachers, coaches, faculty, and parents have all played an intricate role in raising us to be the people that we are today. Parents, thank you for your unconditional love and support, for realizing you couldn't stop us from growing up and allowing us the opportunities to try new things. Thank you for always being proud of us through our triumphs and trials. To the York faculty, we also owe a multitude of thanks. Your passion for teaching and the confidence that you had in us is one of the main reasons that we are here today. You believed in us. At York, we have been challenged to stretch our minds and encouraged to try as many new things as possible. With these ideals, we truly are ready to face the world. The next step will be different for everyone here. Some are staying close to home and some are going across the country. Some people will stay best friends forever and others might lose touch. However, no matter what your destination is when you leave York, I have a challenge for you. Never forget the things that you learned here. Every experience has made you who you are today and inspired your dreams. We all have hopes for the future, images of what we may come to be in the next 10 years or so. If York has taught us one thing, it's that these dreams are completely achievable. The old cliche is true. You really can do anything you set your mind to. Walt Disney once said, all of our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. Our dreams have been dreamt, and now it's our time to go after them. We are standing at the threshold between what has been and what is yet to be known. Armed with precious tools and careful guidance we have received, it is up to us to muster up enough nerve to cross that line. We are fortunate enough to have grown up in a community that has prepared us for this very moment. The time is now. Everyone has done all that they can to help us. Together, we are ready to take one last step as a class. We are ready to move forward. Congratulations, class of 2010.
High school was tough. We began walking these hallways as unorganized, unbalanced, lost, want to be cool freshmen for the first year of our high school lives. We didn't know what we wanted to do. We didn't know where we were going to end up. We didn't know who we wanted to become or even what route we were going to take to get to the finish line. Although in our four years here at York, it was our job to grow up, to find the answers to these questions, and to find the balance in our lives. It was our objective as high school students to grow into ourselves and figure out how to balance our lives as individuals. And when I say balance, I mean knowing when to be serious and knowing when to joke around, knowing when to be mature, knowing when to let loose, knowing when to get homework done, and knowing when to go out with friends, knowing when to be a kid, and knowing when to be the young adults we were unknowingly becoming. The time spent in these classrooms, in these hallways, the time spent with these teachers and these students was all meant to teach us how to become our own responsible, grown up, and balanced selves. We were taught how to deal with stress, we were taught how to behave with our friends. We were taught how to talk to teachers, taught how to deal with our schoolwork, deal with the stresses of sports and extracurriculars, and we're taught how to deal with our own lives in the very building you are sitting in today. We learned how to balance our lives due to the experiences we had in a Mr. Kern's eighth hour philosophy class, or in a Ms. Davis third hour US history class, or in a Mr. Lorick's seventh period trigonometry class or in a second period, Miss McCain's college literacy class. We learned how to balance our lives in jazz band, in choir, under the lights on a Friday night, on the field, on the gymnastics beam, on the track, on the wrestling mat, on stage, and on the court. We also learned how to balance our lives through the relationships we made with the people we were on sports teams with with the people we were in chemistry with, or the people we sat at lunch with and hung out with on the weekends. Here, here is where we learn how to balance our lives. And from what we learned here, we are supposed to take into the future when we go off to college, when we begin looking for jobs, when we get married, and when we have children. 
the tough times, the sports games, the classes, the dances, the activities and the experiences we had in this big brick building are the ones that will shape our future and be with us forever. Thank you, York. <laughs> Thank you, York class of 2010. Thank you. Superintendent Krizik, at this time, it is my honor to certify to you that the students sitting before you have met the graduation requirements for the York High School Diploma, and I present to you the York Community High School Class of 2010. Graduates, parents, faculty, members of the Board of Education, Ms. Smith, and guests, it is my honor and privilege to commend the York Class of 2010 for their scholastic, artistic, and athletic achievements, for their service leadership and philanthropic contributions, for the recognition that they have brought to this remarkable, distinguished high school, and for the numerous intangible gifts they will be leaving behind. Yes, this is a class leaving a legacy. But graduates, before I share with you some words of congratulations and words to think about as you leave York, I'd like to begin by sharing some words and thoughts with your parents and your teachers. To the parents of the graduates, I extend to you congratulations, as this is a day that is not only a celebration of your child, but it is a celebration of you. I thank you for providing to your children your unconditional support and encouragement and for nurturing the value of education as these are among the priceless gifts they have received from you, gifts they will benefit from for the rest of their lives. And parents, if there was ever a moment where you can take an opportunity to remind your child that the encouraging and nurturing you had provided to them those limits and that embarrassing curfew that you had set, the extra tutoring you made available to them, the ACT course you paid for, those life experiences you provided, the driving back and forth to school practices and events, the running out in the middle of the night to get that poster board for a much needed presentation, and last but not least, for those loving, gentle reminders about doing their homework that you gave relentlessly. All of those things contributed to the, to the success they have experienced thus far. Today would be that day for you to find that perfect moment to remind them that this day is just a little bit about you too. I would like to express my sincere appreciation and admiration to the faculty here at York and all of the faculty in Elmhurst Community Unit School District 205 for the individual and collective contributions you have made to this class of 2010. From early childhood through the 12th grade, your influence over these graduates cannot be fully measured by a single test score or a season's record or even their GPA. Your influence is measured in their character, in their passion for learning, in their work ethic, in the acceptance, compassion, and advocacy they show for others, and in all of the contributions they have made along the way and con will continue to make going forward. The full impact of the difference you have made cannot yet be seen, but it will be worth the wait. Graduates, before you leave, I want to give you something to think about. In 1962, Claire Booth Luce, one of the first women to serve in the U.S. Congress, offered some advice to President John F. Kennedy. A great man, she told him, is one sentence. Abraham Lincoln's sentence was, he preserved the Union and freed the slaves. Franklin Roosevelt's was, he lifted us out of a Great Depression and helped us win a world war. Luce feared that Kennedy's attention was so splintered among so many different priorities that his sentence risked becoming a muddled paragraph. 
You don't have to be the President of the United States or of your class or of any club or of any organization to learn from this tale. Creating a life toward a greater purpose is as simple as thinking about what your sentence will be. Maybe it will be she discovered the cure for cancer. He inspired the lives of others with his stories. She taught two generations of children to read. He raised healthy children who led healthy lives. Her generosity of time and money made a lasting difference in the community she lived in. As you contemplate your purpose in life, begin with the big question, what's your sentence? But don't stop there, because real achievement doesn't happen overnight. Being able to live a life that can lead to the writing of a simple sentence and not a muddled paragraph means having a life filled with small wins. So stay focused, keep yourself motivated, look for small measures of improvement and change. And before you go to sleep each night, ask yourself the small question, was I better today than yesterday? And then someday, before you know it, you will have the answer to the big question. My congratulations and best wishes to each of you. You have brought pride to everyone sitting here. It is my sincere hope that your collective experiences in all of the schools you have attended thus far have given you the opportunity to develop your incredible minds and talents, have fostered an unconquerable spirit, and have also taught you the importance of service, tolerance, optimism, acceptance, forgiveness, and perseverance. Because as you leave York, I hope you leave with not, not, not just knowing how to write a research paper, an English 11 social issue presentation, or a paragraph, but that you leave here being able to write a sentence, your sentence. Board President Mrs. Ostajek and Mr. Carlquist and members of the Board of Education, I certify that this class has met all of the rigorous graduation requirements established by both the State of Illinois and the Elmhurst School District Board of Education. I now present to you the York Class of 2010. Superintendent Krizik, Principal Smith, faculty, graduates, parents, it is a wonderful honor for me to address you today on behalf of the entire Board of Education. To all who graduate today, I have just one word to say, congratulations. Your families, friends, and teachers are extremely proud of you, and for good reason. You should also know that the pride of your accomplishments goes well beyond the walls of this field house. The entire community has rooted for you, supported you. Neighbors and local businesses have invested more than $100 million in your education during your time here in District 205, and you've made the most of it. The accomplishments of this graduating class are numerous, whether in the classroom, on the field of competition, or in clubs. You have excelled. Academically, your class has had eight National Merit semifinalists and 14 commended scholars. Very impressive. You had the highest number of seniors ever at York taking AP exams. 290 seniors took 715 exams. And the Illinois State Scholar Program, which recognizes the best and brightest students from across Illinois high schools, designated 148 York students as Illinois State Scholars, the highest in York history. Every student. <laughs> but every student in this class has achievements of which to be proud, and all of you have earned the right to be called graduates of York. Four years ago, I had the opportunity to address those of you who were promoted from Sandburg Middle School. I don't expect that you remember those remarks. Uh, that's okay. You won't remember these words four years from now either. At the time, I spoke about how your education was like photos saved in a scrapbook, capturing for a lifetime memories, information, and emotions. All of you have added much new content to your virtual folder since entering York in 2006. That same month, September of 2006, there was another newcomer that came on the scene. September 06 was when Facebook was launched. Now, anyone with an email address confirming they were at least 13 years old could get connected. Now, I'm not plugging Facebook, but it has been an incredible phenomenon in just the short period of time that you've been here at York High School. 
Now, despite some controversy, Facebook has, by most measures, been wildly successful. Today, it boasts more than 400 million users. Now, perhaps you're not on Facebook or don't know what it is, Grandpa. <laughs> Facebook is in a category called social networking. It uses technology to enable something that is very human and personal, that is, connecting and sharing with people. At its core, it's all about community. Today, you're graduating from a community that proudly states, this is York. It's a community of teachers and administrators and friends who have played a major role in why you are here today. You're also a part of the community of Elmhurst that has surrounded you and supported you. And there are new communities on your horizon, college, career, service organizations, and more. One thing that Facebook reminds us about in a very simplistic way is how extraordinarily interconnected we all are. Like with social networks, our world is inextricably linked in ways that we might never have imagined before. We've seen financial systems shockwaves reverberate around the globe due to sophisticated interdependencies. Nations must now collaborate on environmental matters because actions in one country or Gulf impacts the entire planet's ecosystem. Even determining who is the community and who's in the community has complexities, as illustrated by public debate on issues like immigration, national security, and civil rights. After all, we're probably all closer than six degrees of separation on this planet. In just a few moments, you will walk across this stage into the next stage of your life where you will face a world of challenges, but more importantly, a universe of opportunity. As you do, may I offer some closing thoughts based on the parallels of Facebook. First, pursue your dreams with confidence. Know that you can make a big difference. For example, Mark Zuckerberg, the founder of Facebook, may not have conceived the impact or scale of the innovation that he was embarking on as a college sophomore, but he began to put his ideas into action. Second, be a contributor to your communities. Jump in and start sharing. Your circle of friends and organization, your world is made better when you contribute in a constructive way. Everyone has something to share, so get involved. Third, steer away from the inappropriate and the inane, partly because your mother may be watching, but as importantly, your graduation is a new beginning. It's a fresh opportunity to establish a new brand. How do you want others to view you? Next. Be balanced and be present. 88-year-old actress Betty White best summed up this Facebook lesson recently when she said, in my day we had phone book, but you wouldn't waste an entire afternoon with it. <laughs> Going forward, where will you choose to invest your time? Finally, keep a sense of humor. Real life, like Facebook, is much more entertaining when you can find the lighter side. Like when the Britney song comes on, you know, it's a party in the USA. <laughs> Inside joke for the graduates. And believe me, there will be parties, graduation parties, deservedly so. This is a time when your years of hard work are rewarded and your achievement is publicly affirmed. Let me close with a twist on the words of encouragement that I've shared with eighth grade students when addressing them during their promotion ceremonies. As they prepare to enter York, I encourage them to take advantage of all that York has to offer and to think of these 10 words of two letters each. If it is to be, it is up to me. Now for you, the graduates of York, as you move beyond your public education, I propose a slightly different twist on those words. It's a model that you've learned here at York, but it becomes increasingly important going forward. This time, the 10 short words of two letters each, if you'll pardon my grammar, my bad grammar. If it is to be, it is up to we. We, together, as citizens, as members of communities, with one another. No matter the college you attend, no matter the career you pursue, whichever communities you join, cooperate, collaborate, support one another. And if you do, not only will you create a better future, but you will be friended by all. Best wishes and congratulations, class of 2010.
Good afternoon. Imagine a girl unclear of what her future will look like, a blurry picture of what college means to her, fear and uneasy think feelings when thinking about a career, ignorant about how the decisions she makes daily may influence her days to come. This is where my mindset was and would have been if it weren't for my experience here. If it weren't for York High School, I wouldn't be who or where I am today. I moved to Elmhurst five years ago from a lower class suburb in Chicago. Soon my environment changed and before my eyes I was faced with new challenges and opportunities. Like many, I walked into York anxious in my new surroundings. But unlike others, I didn't have the friendships formed from childhood. I had to learn to adapt, make new friends, learn new material, and without realizing it, my environment started to change my mindset for the better. I'm not here to talk about myself but rather be a living example of one student who was impacted by those within this community. Academically, I was challenged. The education that I was receiving before was nowhere near as advanced as York. 
the faculty did not just fulfill their role as educators, but they were compassionate mentors. They su the support they provided was something unfamiliar to me. They were genuine to help their students and truly concerned with the students' performance. With open doors, the teachers, counselors, and college advisors always let us know when they were available for extra help. In addition, I learned of all the clubs and sports programs York had. Opportunities were endless. They were so endless that I got the privilege to be a part of York Advisory Team, a group that had our very own principal, Ms. Smith, as our leader. Here, students were given the chance to make our school a better place and tell our fellow classmates' concerns to the person of most influence. Ms. Smith's care for her students was surreal. The little things she noticed and the big improvements she followed through on were a reflection of the service and care that this school really had. I'm not here to make the faculty love me before I go. The truth is, I am authentically and humbly thanking those within York that made it possible for all of us to grow and learn from. As I reflect on my four years here, I wonder how and why one changes so much. I realize it's because of those within this school. Because of our school providing many opportunities and because the faculty provided support and encouragement, I took advantage of all that was given to me, rather than being fearful. Before I knew it, I was creating groups that encouraged diversity. I began to mentor freshmen, help transfer students, dance at football games, and make videos that were broadcasted to the entire school. York did more than fulfill their role of educating me before I go. I grew as a person. In this time before we go, seniors, we must reflect on all that we have experienced. Sometimes circumstances change, but the truth is, these new situations are blessings in disguise. When given these opportunities, we must take advantage of it and recognize what we have accomplished. It is important that we reflect so that we can see how much we have achieved and how our decisions have impacted our future. If it weren't for the influence of York High School, we wouldn't have been able to grow. Most of us will go to college in the fall and soon be faced with the same new beginning as we did entering here. We will handle these new challenges and opportunities based on who we have become. Imagine that girl now, a senior graduating from York High School, excited for the future, ready to go to college, prepared for the new challenges, and well equipped for the work that she will be endured towards her new future. Thank you.
welcome faculty, staff, parents, and soon-to-be graduates. I have to admit, it's strange to be up here actually speaking to all of you in person. I'm more used to sending out a mass text or posting on Facebook. But I'm grateful for the opportunity to speak to you face-to-face -face on this very important day in our lives. I'm amazed at how quickly these four years have gone by. I guess that should come as no surprise. Although it sounds cliche, I think we all now truly understand the meaning of time flies. Even though we may not know exactly what the future holds for us, we can be confident in the fact that York has provided us with a solid foundation on which to build our futures. I think I speak for all the graduates when I thank our parents for all their endless support. We are grateful for all the rides to practice at 6 a.m. and the late night pickups from games, rehearsals, and dances. Although it may not always seem like it, we appreciate all your involvement and encouragement. Well, usually. Unfortunately, for those parents who like to check power school hourly, I hate to break it to you, but they don't have it in college. Don't worry, maybe we'll share our grades with you. Over the past four years, we've also had the opportunity to experience and benefit from diverse and amazing teachers. We have learned so much, not only in our classes, but our teachers have provided us with invaluable lessons outside of the classroom as well. From Mr. Torney's historic biking adventures, to the wise educational vignettes of Mr. Kern, to our candid conversations with caring teachers like Ms. Peta, these moments have truly shaped our high school years, and your influence will stay with us throughout our lives. Thank you to our principal, Ms. Smith, and the, and the rest of the administration, faculty, deans, and counselors for your hard work on our behalf. As a graduating class, we have had many triumphs and unfortunately tragedy. But with each other's support and the support of the school, we have made it through these four years to a moment where we can now celebrate our accomplishments and look back with pride. Now, as we wish each other good luck, remember, it's not a goodbye, it's a see you later. After today, we are all going to take different paths in our lives. But the one thing we will always have in common is that we are the 642 graduating York Dukes of 2010, and that is something no one can take from us. We have waited 18 years for this day, and we have earned it. Everyone's heard it already, but today really is the beginning of the rest of our lives. I hope that you find what you're looking for in life and never forget where you came from. Thank you for letting me represent you as class president during the most important and fun year of high school. Congratulations. And as Coach Schulte says, we got her done. Thank you. And now, I would like to invite uh, the first row of our graduating class to approach the stage. <laughs> Soju Abraham. Nasra Sirwa Achampang. John Winston Ackerman, George Alonzo Acosta, Stephen James Adkins, Lauren Elizabeth Ahern, Megan Elizabeth Ahern, Nathan S. Algrim. Anthony Albert Albergo. Andrew Ross Aldrich. Grace Elizabeth Aldrich. Thomas Alex. Sean Benjamin Allen.
Megan Jean Alvarez. Kelsey Renee Anderson. Jewel Bethany Anderson. Emil Anthony. Anthony Ray Aponte. Rebecca Shane Arneson. Caitlin Ann Ashner. Kaylee Noel Avello. Kyle Jeffrey Babby. Anthony Michael Bassador. David Vincent Baker. Catherine Michelle Baker. Brandon Rudy Barbosa. Bryce Joseph Barrett. Kristen Carol Barton. Angela Lynn Basili. John Bender. Denzel Germain Benford Miller. Katherine Holly Bennett. Erica Marie Berg. Joseph Edward Berg. Kevin Edward Berg. Christine Marie Bersani. Gina Elise Bianca Fiore. Brittany Ann Biggs. Kara Christine Bierga. Brianna Renee Black. September Corrine Blue. Michael Avery Bohm. Hugo Leonardo Bontempo Mello. Daniel James Burrell. Matthew Philip Boria. Bradley Stephen Bosworth. Ashley Christine Bowman. Alexandra Brosh. Benjamin Thomas Bright. Jamila Brochwala. Stephen James Brogan. Michael Stephen Bronke. Robert William Brushenko. Laura Ann Alexandra Brusson. Lucy Helen Bubbin. Christina Marie Buckley. Darren Margaret Buckley. Amanda Francis Budnick. Amanda Pauline Bowen. Colleen Marissa Burke. David Michael Burke. Kate Bernier.
Eric James Busby. Jamie Marita Catamartori. Caroline Cahill. James Ernest Cahill. Roslia Angela Calderoni. Ashley Marie Campbell. Trevor Daniel Cardea. Kelly Ray Carlquist. Daniel Alexander Carlson. Nicole Whitney Carlson. Maxwell Dean Carson. Ryan Michael Cassidy. Christopher Joseph Catalano. Michael Anthony Catanzaro. Madeline A. Cease. Adam Wesley Cecil. Christina Rose Cernowski. Bridget Ann Chadwick. Angel Chidez. Christina Helen Chiapetta. Rebecca R. Christensen. Diana Mary Elizabeth Civitello. Sarah Marie Civitello. Catherine Grace Clark. Lauren Rose Clark. Samuel Joseph Cleary. Jessica Michelle Cleveland. Peter George Coffin. Joshua Thomas Cole. Tommaso Colella. Mary Bridget Collins. Hayden Christopher Colvin. Jacob John Connell. Jesse David Connell. Sarah Mary Connor. Katie Marie Converse. Shannon Catherine Corcoran. Daniel Aldo Corso. Cesar Cortez. Michaela Francine Constantino. Melissa Michelle Cozy. Megan Paula Creed. Nicholas Richard Creel. Yaritzi Crisanto. Portia Tashanita Crockett. Amalia Flores Crow. Jissy Syriac. Mira Catherine Micah Daly. Ryan Matthew Daly. 
Jeremy Dillon D'Amato, Connor Joseph Dam, Jordan Ann Darty, Allison Jane Davis, Devin Jean Marie Davis. Marco Kevin Davis, Michael Victor DeBernardis, Jack William Deiters, Christopher M. Delgado, Claire Gwendolyn Deering, Neri DeVrishi, Nicholas Milos de Spinach. Zachary David Detloff. Peter James Dever. James H. Dickert. Matthew Eric Diedrich. Jessica Marie Dillon. Carmelina Christina DeVita. Emma Francis Doherty. Matthew C. Doherty. Christopher Scott Dennell. Jonathan Doherty, Nina Kathleen Doty, Timothy Paul Drahakapil, Kaylee Phyllis Dunn, Kevin G. Dunn, Laura G. Dunn, Paige Danielle Dupuis, Jeremy Robert Dvorak, Catherine Ann Dwyer, Eric Stephen Dyer, Manu Ignatius Etacara, Jessica Wren Edwards, Torrance Miles Island, Emily Elizabeth Ellert, DeMonte Deshaun Ellis, Joshua Michael Elmore. Tyler James Elston. Julian Diana Ernst. Elizabeth Catherine Fairmark. Joseph Michael Fagiano. Gavin Linnell Fahey, Thomas Patrick Falkenberg, William Joseph Finelli, Aliza Rose Farrell, Allison Catherine Fazio, Evan Jake Fenley, Brianna Marie Federoff. Lucas Scott Fewer II.
Sarah Lynn Fisher, Robert Wolf, Ralph Fisher, Jeremy Fisher Haas, Matthew Eugene Flaska, Kevin Matthew Flood, Kevin Joseph Flynn, Rachel Jana Foster, Carly Rose Frere, David Jonathan Franco, Megan Marie Frigo, Megan Eileen Fry, Hannah Claire Gabriel, Brendan John Gallagher, Roy James Garcia II, John Gast, Trace Anthony Gaynor, Theodore Joseph Gaiman, Miranda Nicole Gentile, Alexandro Spinellis Gioli, Samuel Arthur Gergetz, Sarah Victoria Gear, Alyssa Roseanne Giordano, Anthony Giuseppe Giusti, Celeste Ann Glassman. Cody James Glover, Daniel Camille Gudyshevsky, Robert Blair Golan Jr., Ernesto Andres Gomez, Santiago Ali Gonzalez, Joseph Robert Good, Laura Ann Gordon, Daniel Lewis Grabenhofer, Jeffrey James Grange. Mariano Grena, Catherine Gail Graziana, Jordan Christine Gray, Samantha Marie Graziano. Daniel Albert Grieve, Lucas Mises Griganovichus, Catherine Lee Grimmer, John David Griswold. Devin Christine Friendrice, John David Griswold, J. 
John Daniel Grosch, David James Grohowski, John David Grubbs, Adam Zorin Gruchek, Martin Guttner, Haley Elizabeth Gunst, Paul Martin Gujewski, Louis Joseph Hall, Amen Charles Hannigan, Matthew Albert Hansen, Masood Muhammad Huck, Harrison K. Harada. Jennifer June Harding, Joseph Stephen Harding, Chloe Christine Harrington, Rashawn Uniqua Harris. Ryan Jacob Hart, Shannon Eileen Heflin, Audrey Marie Heiberger, Aaron Christopher Hine. Eric Randall Hines, Mariah Joy Hines, Christina J. Helm, Ian Thomas Hendrick, Philip Andrew Hanine. Connor Michael Hennessy, Derek H. Hermanson, Natalie De Jesus Hernandez, Julian Nicole Hoyle, Chelsea Ann Hinchley. Cody Lynn Hinchley, Emily Mary Hogan, John Charles Hogan, Maggie May Hogan, Temple William Holmes. Margaret F. Horner, Victoria Emily Hewitt, John Jesse Houlihan, Philip Howell, David James Hubmel. Taylor Maeve Hunt, Ann Shirley Herney, Jamie Lynn Huster, Janie Lane Huster, Christiana Marie Iannucci. 
Carson Alexander Engel. Gustino Anthony Izzo. Ellen Elizabeth Jagger. Navid Fatima Jagadar. Samira Jagadar. Justin James. Mary Alexandra Japsik. Gina Jexy. Sharon Bijou John. Arthur Brooks Johnson. Caitlin Marie Johnson. Kelly Aline Johnson. Corey James Jordan. Kyle R. Jordan. Mary Elizabeth Jordan. Jennifer Lee Josephs. Timothy Mark Jurek. Kevin Thomas Kohovic. Martin Lawrence Kalita. Claudio Camberry. Agota Julia Kaminsky. Sean Peter Kapazinski. Emily Ann Koch. Treve Darnell Kelly. Robert Michael Kenny. Matthew Robert King. Morgan E. King. Gavin Richard Kinney. Mary Ann Kissinger. Daniel John Clank. Mallory Madison Kling. Rachel Ann Knighton. Tyler D. Knighton. Danielle Marie Cook. Brian Michael Kozar. Kara Lynn Kosher. Daniel Joseph Kosich. Hakan Anzo Koski. Bennett Forse Kostecki. Scott William Kramer. Patrick John Craston. Matthew A. Kraus. Sarah Elizabeth Cresson. Mark Roman Krolakevich. Andrew Kubich. Alvin Kudel. Brian Michael Kulaga. Rachel Ann Kunze. Jacqueline Page Curtis. Amanda Maya Kurian.
Jimmy Joseph Kirian, Jason Michael Kuzara, Katie Charlotte Kwiatek, Heather Christine Lamb, Melissa Landers, Lucy Ann La Palermo, Alexandra May Lawrence, Mikhail Lawrence Harvey, Patrick Joseph Layton, Shannon Michelle Lees, Timothy Joseph Leonard, Carly Melissa Leone, David Alden Levin, Clara Gileng Lewis, Alexa Ray Litchie, Elena Lithis, Kelly Ray Lockerbie, Andrew Mack Lockhart, Jose Lopez, Michelle Lotfi, Alexander Yabet Lozano, Leslie Nicole Lucas, Colleen Elizabeth Lucky, Melvin Fernando Luna, Noreen Mary Lydon, Andrew Trace McIntosh, Patrick Ryan McNider, Syed Tosef Madani, Chelsea Ann Maddox, Morgan Michaela Maher, Rosalina Manikatova, Jed Manjankel, Alec Courier Manning, Lucas Francis Marinello, Molly Teresa Marquardt, Jeremy John Marson, Aaron Christine Martin, Spencer George Martins, Daniel T. Martin, Rochelle Morgan Martinez, Abraham Matthew, Alexander Robert Matranga, Cody William Maynard, Christopher John McCarville, Spencer William Condon McClure, Peter James McDade, <laughs> Helen.
Heather McGeeck. Bridget Eileen McGinn. Kelly Ann McHugh. Stephen Liam McHugh. Brian Edward McLaughlin. Megan Colley McManus. Devonta Daryl McWayne. Ramona Jean Medors. Brianna Elizabeth Meyer. Jonathan Michael Malone. Anthony Michael Malone, Jr. Mark Anthony Menelicino. Zane Merchant. Ashley Sinclair Meredith Went. Philip Nathan Metzger. Caitlin Jane Myers. Kevin Michael Michaud. Susanna Mirzuska. Tara Kathleen Mikus. Paul Malazzo. Daniel Borg Milling. Kendra Jean Mills. Abigail Jane Minor. Huda Mirza. Salman Mirza. Dante Mitchell. Dana Madrowski. Bernie Mohar. Elizabeth Lynn Moll. Lisa Momkis. Jennifer Momkis. Michael J. Monacos. Samuel Menares. Sonia Ray Munson. Michael Fernando Montaban. Anthony Paul Montez. Nicholas Joseph Morales. Jessa Marie Mordini. Eric Michael Moreau. Casey S. Morency. Mackenzie Quinn Moriarty. Marek Victor Mrochek. Bonnie Jean Mueller. Iris Malai.
Anna Yali Munoz. Oscar Munoz. Margaret Murphy. Olivia Claudette Murphy. Christina June Murray. Anna Marie Nelson. Rachel K. Nelson. Chloe Nesky. Bridget E. Newsham. Ashley Marie Elizabeth Nimt. Timothy John Nolan, Jr. Jack Henry Norris. Mark Daniel Nosek. Rachel Elizabeth O'Brien. Daniel Ocampo. Edward James O'Connor, Jr. Ryan Michael Ohm. Mark Alalde. Sean O'Malley. David Andres Andrula. Alyssa Ortiz. Kelly Marie Osgood. Ryan Thomas Osgood. Charlene Faye Teresa Osmansky. Cassandra Marie Pacelli. Panyu Ann Pettiera. Grace Rose Pacaris. Jeffrey Alexander Palash. Jeremy Ryan Palaz. Fabiola Palomino. Kevin Thomas Pankow. Thomas Patrick Pankow. Jerry Alexander Panache. Monsi P. Parik. Kayla Christine Parks. Jackson Parr. Samuel Joseph Patty. David Matthew Pellini. Diana Alexandra Perez. Kate Perajogina. Sebastian P. Pernal. Daniel Joseph Perino.
Tobin Sonny Peters. Julie Sommer Peterson. Joven Phillip. Kevin K. Phillip. Matthew Jeffrey Pizzoni. Mackenzie Michelle Pittman. Daniel Lewis Polkow. Sophie Mary Pomeran. Nicole Elizabeth Primo. Allison Price. Christina Pernove. Rachel Ann Prisbolek. Hayden Joel Perper. James Patrick Pine. Samuel Wade Horry. Elizabeth Cassidy Rabins. Amanda M. Rafter. Kenna Elise Rago. Tina C. Rajan. Chelsea Ann Ricosi. Elizabeth Evelyn Rimmel. Tanya Ramirez. Anna Christine Ratliff. Blake Angelo Redman. William Alfredo Reichert. Lauren Elizabeth Reichel. Eric Carl Reisenbuckler. Stephanie A. Restepo. Jordan Renee Ritana. Corey Ashley Rexing. Yvette Reyes. Joseph Michael Richardson. Carl Paul Reese. Will Alexander Ritter. Stavana Renee Roberts. Tremaine A. Robinson. Yasmin Marie Robinson. Mary Kate Roan. Patrick Gavin Romanowski. Alexis Rosado. Michael Stephen Rosati. Joseph William Ross. Laura Jane Rovi.
Linnea Marie Rummage. Jonathan Clark Ruprecht. Eric Bernard Russell. Kevin Lee Rizutko. Edward William Sack. Philip Jameson Sachs. Catherine Ann Sadowski. Cassandra Marie Salinas. Stefan Salzano. Richard Christopher Sanchez. Kushpal Sanga. Sam Peter Scalzetti. Brian Billichin Soraya. Matthew Rainier Schacht III. Nicole Lynn Shaw. Brittany Marie Schaub. Sydney Rochelle Schmelter. John Kenneth Schmidt. Kelsey Nicole Schmidt. Lauren Taylor Schnaith. Olivia Ray Schneider. Ethan James Schreiber. Christine Marie Schwegler. Christopher J. Scola. Kyle Ann Marie Sebastian. Evan James Cook Zablanca. Corey Mitchell Seacrest. Catherine Morgan Segretti. Evan Kathleen Semelhack. Alexander Dominic Sinisi. James Joseph Sirica. Anne Marie Rose Saratella. Jacob Daniel Scarbosa. Cody Jeffrey Sharko. Ryan Alexander Shea. Elise Aaron Sherlock. Nicholas Alexander Shulda. Dennis Charles Cyber III. Jason Wesley Silverthorne. Jacqueline Elizabeth Simon. Audrey Brynja Simper. Stephen John Skowski. Michelle Lee Slagle. Rachel Ann Barbara Slama. Daniel John Sliwa. Michael Richard Small. 
Amanda Marie Smith. Andrew Murphy Smith. Brendan Murphy Smith. Brian A. Smykowski. George Solis. Stephen John Burke Soder. Jarena Ann Southward. David Matthew Spain. Thomas Donald Spears. Emily Christine Spokus. Morgan Jacqueline St. Laurent. Zachary David Starr. Pierce Thomas Stefanik. Taylor Roderick Stipe. Olivia Lillian Stokola. Bridget Lynn Stone. Michael Patrick Stotzer. Julie Ann Strand. Leanna Rose Strecker. Caleb Michael Straits. Andrew Thomas Stufen. Andrew Michael Sullivan. Moise Hamid Sultan. Joseph Scott Sutherland. Abigail Walsh Swain. Patricia Lenise Sykes. Devin Elizabeth Tam. Serena Theodore. <laughs> Stephanie Taylor Terbush. Alexander Timothy Tess. Paige Francis Thielen. Jobin Sonny Thomas. Martin Thomas. William Christopher Thompson. Catherine Lynn Thorpe. Taylor B. Thorpe. Caitlin Jean Tilly. Mariah Rose Timms. Joseph John Tate. Michelle Leela Tolar. Sean Paul Tomlinson. Alexander Burdett Tandu. Jessica Catherine Tooley. Phelan Nicole Tolf. Jonathan Russell Townsend. Katie Ann Travers. 
Elizabeth Corinne Trumbull. Anthony Edward Tamparello. Nina Kathleen Turk. Brandon Ellis Turner. Tracy Lynn Van Zandenbergen. Cassie Elaine Vanco. Joe Joy Varghese. Stephanie Vasquez. Selena Velasquez. Marcus Scott Vickery. James Michael Vlahi Otis. Haley Elizabeth Van Holst. Donica Voyanovich. Bridget Mary Wagner. Caitlin Marie Wagner. Dylan Joseph Wagner. Catherine Francis Wallace. Angelica Magashota Wazaluski. Charles Morris Watson. David Martin Watson. Michaela Lee Watson. Eric Robert Westerberg. Melissa Ann Whitney. Connor James Whitting. Grant Burnside Wersom. Stephen John Weesey. Chad Mitchell Wilkinson. Jenna Lee Williams. Jacob Michael Wilms. Andrew John Wilson. Peter Jens Winsenson. Carl Peter Worth. Amy Voidasak. Lydia Catherine Wolf. Jordan Elizabeth Wolf. Caitlin Rose Woodell. Benjamin Johannan. Raymond Tyler Young, Jr. Kristen Michelle Young. Eugene Zaharia. Lauren Catherine Zorante. Michelle Marie Zerbe. David Donald Zytek II. Lauren Michelle Zamparelli. Joseph Robert Zaccaro.
It is my honor to present to you the York Community High School graduating class of 2010. Congratulations. There are several thousand collisions involving trains each year, which result in over 1,000 injuries and several hundred deaths. A majority of these deaths occur when someone is struck by a train while trespassing on railroad property. Remember, railroad property is private property. Trespassing along railroad property is not only against the law, it's very dangerous. Avoid taking shortcuts. The only safe place to cross railroad tracks is at a designated crossing. Don't get caught dead on the tracks. Stay off, stay away, stay alive. One in every 150 children is diagnosed with autism. Autism is treatable. Recovery is possible. To learn more about autism, contact the Autism Research Institute at autism.com. Don't let your child become a statistic. This is no place for the Tour de France, and this is no place for NASCAR. But in everyday life, bicycles and cars do share the road. I'm Robbie Ventura. I spent four years riding with Lance Armstrong and the U.S. Postal Team. I've coached hundreds of cyclists who compete around the world, and I can tell you it's no accident when everyone gets where they're going safely. The key is to know the rules of the road. For example, cyclists have a right to be on the street, and people in cars have an obligation to watch out for them. Often the road is the only way for people on bikes to get where they're going, and some sidewalks are even more dangerous than streets. Finally, some communities allow kids to ride on the sidewalk, but it may be illegal for adults. When cyclists are on the road, they're supposed to obey all traffic laws, signs, and signals, always riding in the same direction as cars in their lane. Some cyclists feel safer riding against traffic where they can see oncoming cars, but that's actually more dangerous because cars have less time to slow down and go around them. People on bikes should also ride predictably and signal so drivers know what they're planning to do. Cyclists turning right may do this or this. Here's what a left turn signal looks like. And if you see this, expect the cyclist to slow down or stop. Whether you're riding or driving, it's also important to know your place on the road. Bicycles should stay as far to the right as practical, but they may have to ride farther out into the lane if there's broken glass, rocks, and other debris by the curb or on the shoulder. People on bikes also ride farther into the lane on narrow roads to keep cars from passing too closely, or they might be moving across the lane getting ready to turn left. Like drivers, cyclists are supposed to use designated lanes if they're planning to turn. Whether you're in a car or on a bike, you should also use extra caution in key situations or danger zones. Take passing for example. When going around a cyclist, a driver should allow at least three feet between the vehicle and the bike. More is better, especially for a cyclist going up a hill or on a high speed road where fast moving vehicles can generate strong air currents. On a narrow road, you might have to move into the next lane to pass safely and that can mean waiting a few seconds for oncoming traffic to clear. Be patient. 
Turning can also put you in a danger zone. Say you're in a car planning to make a right turn, but there's a cyclist to your right or riding behind you. People are often tempted to speed up, get ahead of the bike, and make that turn, but doing so could cause a crash. If there's any chance you're going to block the path of a bike on the road or a parallel bike path, wait for the cyclist to pass before turning. How much time do you lose by slowing down and playing it safe? As you can see, it's only a matter of seconds. And when you're turning or changing lanes, don't forget about your blind spots. After checking your mirrors, always look quickly to your right or left. Another major risk is a car turning left into the path of an oncoming bike. In these situations, drivers may misjudge the speed and distance of cyclists or fail to see them. Bikes are smaller than cars, so they're harder to see and may appear further away. But some could be moving pretty fast, 20 or even 30 miles an hour. And if the cyclist is going straight, he has the right of way. Bike paths or sidewalks that run parallel with the road may seem like fairly safe places, but these too can be danger zones. A driver making a turn might be focused on the road and not see a cyclist traveling on the sidewalk or path until the last minute. Someone riding on a sidewalk or path in the opposite direction of a driver is even less likely to be seen. So in these situations, drivers should be extra careful checking the sidewalk or path for cyclists or pedestrians. People on bikes should ride defensively. Watch for motorists making a turn and be prepared to stop. Another danger zone involves driveways or alleys. Drivers and cyclists often cruise right into the street, pulling out of a driveway or alley, looking for cars in the middle of the lane, but not for bikes or pedestrians on the sidewalk or on the right side of the road. And if you're only looking to your left for oncoming traffic, you won't see a cyclist coming from the other direction. You have to remind yourself every time to take it slow and look both ways before entering the road. Cyclists riding along parked cars are in another danger zone because drivers and passengers sometimes open doors. Whoa. This happens so often, cyclists actually have a name for it, being doored. So if you're getting out of a parked car, always look over your shoulder to make sure no cyclists are coming. And cyclists may want to ride farther into the lane. One final danger zone is right behind the wheel or handlebars. You're blocking the road. I'm trying to get by here. You have to give me room. You have to wait a second. When you're on the road, conflicts can occur, and it's tempting to express yourself. But getting angry, hostile, or abusive doesn't help. And it can take you to places you never intended to go. Aggressive behavior can lead to criminal charges. Revving your engine, blasting your horn, yelling, or pounding on a vehicle can result in legal action against drivers or cyclists. The best advice for anyone on the road is to stay calm, exercise caution, be patient and courteous, share the road, show respect, and always be on the alert, especially in those danger zones. When passing a cyclist, leave at least three feet between car and bicycle. More is better. Be patient when passing and when turning right. If there's any chance you'll block a bike in your lane, on the sidewalk or side path, slow down and wait for the cyclist to pass. If you're making a left, remember that oncoming cars and bikes have the right of way and that bicycles may be moving faster than you think. Don't forget to check your blind spots and to signal whenever passing or turning. Be especially careful when leaving a driveway or alley. Check the street and sidewalk in both directions for cars, cyclists, and pedestrians. And look for bikes before getting out of a car that's parked in the street. Finally, keep in mind that you're not in a race where NASCAR meets the Tour de France. When you share the road, the reward is everyone gets where they're going safely.